All right, and welcome back to the channel, buddy, and I hope you're doing fine. I'm still recovering from my cold and fever. I'm doing already way better. The weekend, I was absolutely effing crushed. But I'm happy that I can show you my Harvest of Ghosts event video, where we will cover a lot of things. Event rewards, how you get the event points, what you can do with the pledge marks, the new event trades, also some trade reworks from old trades, new guns and tools, and there is some spicy stuff in there. And then afterwards, I will talk about my first impression from all the stuff when I tried it. Let's go. Okay, so let's start with the rewards because I think this is what most people have interest in. Okay, so first one, let me just play the animation once more. Beautiful, we have one of the three, well, pumpkin dudes. The first one is Harvest Day. The next one is gonna be a Scottfield Swift. I like it, we have that already on the Silenced Weatherly a very similar paint job. So I think we will see more of that. I don't mind it because it looks absolutely awesome. Very early you also unlock the rival maze. So whenever there is a new gun or new gun variant, I'm gonna talk about it later in the video. We also have Calavera Torch, which is a fusee, and we also had that color pattern already before. We have it currently on, for example, the Lamette Carbine, the Met Kit, and the packs true shot, if I remember this correctly. Then we have the Dark Dynamite Satchel. Uh, yeah, so, bundle of dynamite sticks, and you detonate that via dark side. I'm gonna show you everything you need to know later in the video. Then some BBs, we also have the Centennial Point Man, which is basically, they call it a mid to long range scope, so I think it's somewhere around marksman scope. It's cool, because we don't have any two slot snipers. Yeah, there are two slot dead eyes, but yeah, whatever. Then, finally, a Centennial Shorty Silencer, which is pretty cool because the last one that we got was an event skin, and if you miss that, you can't have it. So, well, this is an event skin again, but if you miss the first one, you can have a different one. And this is again the same as the Science Vitaly. Hand Crossbow Revive Bolt is level 8, and it says right here, revives a down teammate on direct impact. Also heals wounded teammates on direct impact. I'm gonna show you that. Yes, you guessed it probably already a bit later. It heals 100. There you go. Spoiler. Then we have the Tooth Blossom, which is a weapon charm. We have the Bomb Launcher. That's our Bomb Lance without the Lance. So the Bomb Lance is now a weapon unlock. So you have the Bomb Launcher first, and then you need to unlock the Bomb Lance later. Once everything goes back into the Bloodline, of course. Now it comes with Dragon Breath, it comes with Steel Bolts. It comes with a wax frag charge. Then you have also your regular explosive harpoon. And then you have this, the bomb plants harpoon. So, causes bleeding. So you turn your bolt thrower, your bomb thrower, your bomb plants, whatever you want to call it now, into, uh, well, a modified crossbow. Because that's what I do. That's what I do. And it's, it's pretty fun, I can tell you that. And here's also Bomb Launcher Harpoon, Bomb Lance Harpoon. So both weapons to get. Then level 13, Poison, Trip Mine, Skin, and then we get the Maynard Sniper. The Maynard Sniper, no, this is not a Sparks. This is a medium ammo, single shot rifle. Deals 145 damage, comes with bleed rounds. Keep in mind, medium ammo, way earlier damage drop off so you will not have the punch from the sparks because people will be like oh my god 145 damage and bleed and yeah sparks with bleed lul yeah not the case okay i'm gonna show you that later then we have the harvest dust it's the second skin from the pumpkin boys beautiful <laughs> yeah still everything attached beautiful high velocity for the maynard sniper some bbs and then the auto four Yes, it's the auto 4 and not the auto 5 shorty, because this one has 4 shots. Yeah, you guessed it already, I guess, right? It doesn't have a lot of spare ammo. I'm not 100% sure. I think it's... Nah. We're going to talk about it later. But 4 shots instead of 5. But medium slot shotguns are deadly right now in a crown and king. Even if it's just 4 as a medium slot... Ooh, you can build some crazy stuff now. You can have the Seni Sniper, the medium slot one, together with this. And you don't need quartermaster, and you have a long to mid range without any actually large range weapons or large slot weapons. I like this a lot, man. Which scratcher? Sure. Weapon charm. Then we have another ammo box, the bullet coffin. 
Uh, yes, this paint job is something that we've seen already now a couple of times. Then we get the Maynard Sniper Dum Dum Ammo. We have a Spark Sniper skin in this paint job with the other silencer weapons. We get the Drilling Shorty now with this uh, very lovely flower paint job. That is really awesome. Some BBs, then we get the Kindoka, which is a new legendary skin. Fancy, you can play this probably together with the Ronin, they're gonna be best friends. We're gonna have a big stamina shot, the Hot Spring Zake. Hey, why not? Then we have a conversion pistol skin, the Honor Skift. We have another weapon charm, the Umamori. More BBs. We have another Concertina trip mine. I'm gonna be honest with you, I will probably not play them. Because you have already a couple that have a dark skin. For example, I think it's called the Honor Shredder. They are basically black or dark gray and they blend in with the envir environment way more. Uh, but hey, maybe you like that. Then we have this beautiful slate. Sure, why not? Perfect for the new Legendary Hunter. Then we have the crossbow dead eye, the Shootist's Joy. Honestly, beautiful. I like these little details with the star. Uh, it's just a shame that you don't play the crossbow dead eye dead much. Next thing, this is amazing. The Seni Trauma. Boy, this is cool. I'm not a huge Senny enjoyer, but this thing right here, I'm gonna play that. Yeah, the Centennial Trauma, the Skull Breaker. A new region shot. Yeah, dude. Same theme, lovely. More BBs, then we have a new army, the Bone Rattler, with also, well, the Bone Scheme. Then we have 37 Harvest Midnight, that's the last one from the Pumpkin Boys. He's a little bit uh, loco, but what you're gonna do? And this one is the charm unlock for the bonus points. So you can see already that the battle pass stops at 37 and it's not going all the way to 50. But there's a lot of stuff in there's a lot of new stuff in it and I honestly love it. Now, sure, let's see how the actual gameplay will be like, but I like the increase of medium slot weapons slash variants because they're not really new. But I have to tell you that, for example, let me go all the way back. I want more of this makeshift stuff. Like that. Give me more. We need more of these unique, unique weapons that give us a reason to play the game. These are unique selling points because only Hunt has them. Yeah, and with that, you saw all the rewards that you can get. Let's jump to the next chapter. Okay, so I showed you the rewards and honestly the event points, this is something that is very repetitive and it's always the same. So if you're a veteran and you know already the old events, you can of course skip this. Timestamps is always in the description below. But if you're new, let me show you real quick. So we have a sealed token and the master clue and they both give 50 event points. Extracting with a token or winning soul survivor is giving you 30 event points. Banishing a target, that can be a boss or a wild target, wild target, Hellborn and Rotjaw, should you actually find here. It's a little bit difficult right now. Or becoming the Wellspring gives you 15 event points as well. The moment you loot your first hunter, you get 10 event points. Doesn't matter how many you loot, the first one does matter. Closing event rifts or event clues gives you 8 and killing a meathead gives you 3. But it doesn't end there because you get more points. For killing hellhounds and immolators you get two. You're getting nothing for armors and hives. Grunts you don't get anything either. Smashing pumpkins gives you one event points and it doesn't matter if it's a scarecrow pumpkin or a regular pumpkin lying around. And yes pumpkins are back and it's awesome that you can smash them again. They do not show up in dark side though. Weekly regular challenges give 750 to 1000 event points. The weekly premium challenge gives 1500. And the first dark tribute that you can do every day is 200 event points. Nice. Keep in mind that these event points are shared with your team. So when one dude loots the first hunter of the match, everybody gets the points. All right. Uh, when somebody extracts with a token, don't you worry, you don't need to have the token, you get the event points as well. Okay, that's it, let's go to the next one. Okay, then the pledge marks, it's very similar to the event points, but for the sake of completion, let me cover this real quick. So you can have up to four pledge marks on a single hunter, right? You can gain a maximum of three per match. 
Now, how do you get them? You either reach a threshold of 30 event points, you loot a hunter, only the first one counts, and banishing a target, only the first one counts. Or you win Soul Survivor. Now, this time there is no event trait that lets you get more pledge marks, for example, for 30 event points. There was one in the past. Hey, when you get 30 event points, you get two pledge marks, not just one. Not the case. And you need these pledge marks to, well, break seals on some Gucci stuff. You have now some traits in the environment, scars traits, burn traits, that you can unlock with a pledge mark. And then you have your regular sealed cash stuff, right? Something that restores all your HP, a banish effect, uh, cash registers, triple buff, you know it by now. Okay, so the sealed cash, they are back, which is good. More restoration effects, which is awesome. Thank you very much. Now, we have the pledge marks. I would say we jump to the event traits. So this event, Harvest of Ghosts, we have three event traits again or event packs so let's put it that way because we have more event traits the first one is the wilderness pack the wilderness pack gives us surefoot as always you go to the supply points they have the objects that you need to interact with and then you unlock your first event trait for example for the wilderness pack you get surefoot now surefoot has this time well two effects right so the first one is that you move faster while crouching let me show you that in one-to-one -one comparison, right? We have now in the top left Surefoot with the speed buff and at the bottom no Surefoot. And you can see that there is not a lot of difference, but there is some. So it's a nice bonus. Of course, you take Surefoot because you want to be able to heal cook explosives while you run. This is the crazy part that makes Surefoot so good. But it doesn't end there. We also have Beast Face with a conditional effect. So if you're pledged to the Wilderness Pact, Beast Face gets a bonus. You don't trigger any wildlife anymore. Be it crows, ducks, horse, dog kennel, chicken coop, you name it, you don't trigger it. AI gets triggered though, right? So it has nothing to do with Shadow. It's just basically all the uh, wildlife sound traps cannot be triggered by you anymore, which is really cool. And then we have actually a new pact, and that's the Pact of Omen, so the middle one. Um, Blast Sense is the trait that you unlock by that, and it's a very interesting one. Loud sounds such as gunshots and explosions are highlighted while in dark side. The range is nuts, that is 200 meters. 200 meters is really far. Go into the shooting range and ping that. 200 is crazy far. Now, at first I was like, this is kind of useless because I can hear the gunshots anyway. So why do I need blast sense? Well, first of all, the effect looks kind of cool, right? Um, you can see all explosions. Red barrels, yellow barrels, heck, even a chaos bomb shows up. And depending on the distance, well, the effect is bigger or smaller. Uh, what a surprise. There are a few things that you have to keep in mind. It only works with loud gunshots. So if somebody's using a suppressor, it's not gonna show up. If somebody's using a crossbow, not gonna show up. So you need an actual gun sound for this to work. At first I was like, well, this is kind of useless because uh, I can hear people anyway. But first of all, now you pinpoint accurate and you're not, hey, what's this north or northwest? 200 meters is crazy far, okay? That's basically the next compound that you can see. So that is nice. You can see the direction that they're moving. And if you get sniped by somebody and they're sitting in a bush, then suddenly Blastance is great. Because very often when you get shot from somebody that is sitting in a forest, it's hard to see them. Right? So now you can bait a shot, peek at the window, hope that they don't kill you, and then you can go into dark side and then you can see where the guy is sitting. Rarely people will snipe at you from 200 plus meters. Okay, that, that will be very, very rare. Uh, so that's great, finding snipers with that, enemy snipers. Yeah, dude, more tools against them is amazing. 
Otherwise, I do agree that Blastens is kind of, for veteran players, not the high value packed. However, they did change Poison Sense. Poison Sense got transformed now into Pain Sense. With Pain Sense, costs now 3 points, not 1 by the way. You can see enemy hunters that are bleeding, poisoned, on fire. So this is, this is good. And on top, when you have the Pact of Omen and Pain Sense, you can see in Dark Side hunters that have no stamina. By the way, it's not just stamina that you drained by melee attacks. That includes your run stamina as well. And honestly, everybody loves to sprint. Not everybody has a stamina shot though, lots of people have it. But you can randomly tap Dark Side with the Pact of Omen and Pain Seer, and I guarantee you there will be some white blobs plopping up. Really cool for ambushing people. So people can play perfect stealth, don't trigger anything, but maybe mail it a few grunts or sprint it for too long and they will show up with the Pact of Omen. Uh, because how often do I run around with the lung icon because I sprint non-stop? Yeah, very often. So Pain Sense for solos can be really nice. I'm not saying that it outvalues Wilderness Pact with Surefoot. Not so sure about that because being able to heal and keep running under pressure is insane. But for people who like to play stealthy and ambush and a little bit like <clears throat> Bushwookies, uh, Pain Sense might be kind of cool. That's a Pact of Omen. We have one more. And that is the Smuggler Pact. So the Smuggler Pact when you enable that, you get Gunrunner. Now, Gunrunner was a little bit different back in the days. Right now, it enables you to get two large slot weapons. So yeah, don't you hate it when you have a crown and king and you go bang, 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 blast, 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 and then you have to reload? Hell no. Take the second one and keep blasting. Now, I don't know how much of a fan I am because we had that back in the days, long time ago, long time ago, okay? Old Quartermaster lets you take double Aftermath or Aftermath Nitro or double Nitro or Crowning King and Aftermath. And people will be like now, oh my God, this is absolutely broken. And you know what? I don't know if they're wrong. Back in the days, the game was completely different, okay? Nowadays, you have a lot of stuff, like, I don't mind going up against an Aftermath, and my win rate against Aftermaths is positive. I kill more Aftermaths than getting killed by Aftermaths, by far. And sometimes a Winnie or Romero is doing the job. So, people will probably meme around with this the first couple days, and you will see a lot of double after and a lot of, you know, crazy loadouts. And there will be very strong loadouts that I'm way more afraid of than actually double aftermath. A Mosin Sniper or a Crack Sniper combined with a full-size Crown and King, for example. Ayo. You have to keep in mind that's super expensive. But uh, that's something that I'm more afraid of, that you can get rid of the downsides of uh, Sniper Scopes. Right, because then you can take for close range a big shotgun. Now you can. So uh, that's gonna be interesting. Will it be broken? Will I pick it a lot? Probably not. And I tell you why I will not pick it a lot because I find the medium slot loadouts kind of more interesting right now. And I don't like playing the meta loadouts non-stop because it gets boring very quickly. Next, we're gonna have a conditional effect for Greyhound. Uh, sprint at full speed for a longer duration. That's Greyhound. Smuggler's pack, sprint faster while carrying bounty. Let's watch some clips. We have again, top left has the fast sprint and the bottom right has the slow sprint. Mm, yeah, you notice it. And if you have to travel across multiple compounds, you will feel it. It's like running the run boost that you have over somebody that is running without sprint stamina with the lungs. So of course, if somebody has stamina shot, 
has smugglers packed with Greyhound and the other guy has to try to catch up without Greyhound and is having the lung symbol the whole time, then this will have a lot of impact. Otherwise, it, it, it's kind of, yeah. And the hunt community is always telling me when you have the bounty, you should not run away, you should fight while you're running away, so yeah, whatever, right? Running away is, is not the way to go, no, right? Yeah, so, okay, there you go. Um, all three packs are interesting. For me personally, Gunrunner will be the boring one, and I will take the more gimmicky Surefoot slash Omen. Omen will be interesting. I think for sniping it will be cool, because you can set up a lot of ambushes, but maybe even with some crossbows and other shenanigans you can do something fancy. We will have to wait and see. That's it! for the pack trades. Let me know in the comment section below what you think about them. There is more though, because some trades changed. Now, don't forget, I'm not gonna cover all the patch notes in this video, because I wanna break down it in smaller elements, maybe even do a short, for example, for the sniper changes. We're gonna do a short clip for that, because otherwise this video is getting even longer. Uh, conduit though, get a health and stamina boost when your team picks up a clue or closes a rift. Solo bonus! Investigating one clue gives the same map progress of investigating two clues. And in my opinion that kind of sucks. <laughs> so what it does, it gives you basically two clues for one, but it's only giving you the stamina once. So a single bounty you're doomed to only get two clues max the moment you take conduit which gives you two three minute boosts of stamina <sighs> Nah, i don't like this uh this would have made sense with six minutes then so you get for every clue that you get or every clue effect for revealing the map if you would get the stamina yeah right now i almost see this as a drawback maybe it's something for newer players where it's nice because then you will find the boss faster for veterans, they kind of know after the first clue a little bit already the rough direction where they have to go and I don't think they will profit much from this. It might even be a drawback. I didn't pick uh, Conduit as a solo ever, but now when I find Conduit in the world I will probably respec it because, well, trade slots are always limited during the event. Interesting choice. All right, and then we have one more, and I think this, this, this might rustle your jimmies. Next is the light for change. Vault, vault, and climb ladder silently also reduces the sound of walking through noise traps. Solo, crouch, walk without making any noise. Um, this is a mistake. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be straightforward here with you guys. I think this is a mistake. And this is coming from somebody who plays 99% of the time, exception maybe Twitch drops, solo. Surefoot? I always said, hey, bring Surefoot back because being able to heal and cook while running is cool. The vanishing of the footsteps, not so much. No, I, I like to think of myself that I'm a solo that plays somewhat fast. I know there are faster players out there. I totally know that. But I think that I'm still faster than average. This will enable even more solo shotgun crouch walking. Fair enough. I think this was not necessary. So Lightfoot was already good. And now it's very close to being a must-have for solos. Not a fan. I think we could have done something else. Maybe reduce the crouch walk without making that much noise. Or maybe just on specific surfaces, but not on metal. Metal is crazy. This is... Oof. And I am a solo player. I find this crazy strong. But hey, let me know what you think about that. Okay, there's more though. And then Bulwark, my beloved Bulwark. Uh, it's a very solid perk for, for two points right now. Uh, it will not save you any more from the explosive harpoon though, from the bomb plants. Which I think is fair, because impaling somebody with the explosive harpoon is difficult enough, and then they have bulwark, and then you're like, oh my god, really now? So, I think this is fair. Uh, yeah, maybe this is the time of the bomb launcher bomb plants combo. Uh, spoiler alert, no it's not, but uh, at least it's gonna be a little bit better. 
Okay, let's have a look at the dark satchel. So you can place this walls, ceilings, almost everywhere. There are some exceptions like the big sliding metal doors because, well, they move. But otherwise, for example, high grass. And before you say, oh my god, this is busted, you have to learn to recognize the sound. And you can hear this very far. Now you can detonate that. I think the detonation range, uh, it's dark side, by the way, to detonate it, is 50 meters. So it is rather far. It's like Solo Serpent, right? It has power, like it blows up meat hats. Um, it, it has a really a lot of power when you place two right next to them. Yeah, great. You can detonate the Dark Satchel by shooting it, by setting it on fire, like a regular dynamite, right? That's how it reacts. You can also toss a big dynamite on a Dark Satchel to trigger it. Because why the hell not? I'm gonna show you also how you can recognize that somebody is triggering the Dark Satchel. First of all, it's very loud and second, it glows like crazy. You can see the glow effect even through the wall, when it's a thin wall, right? And Dauntless, yes I know Dauntless OP, Dauntless can defuse that thing. So if you get blown up during the event one too many times, try some Dauntless. <laughs> it might help you. Okay, next up we're gonna have the bomb thrower. Uh, the bomb thrower is basically the bomb lands uh, without the lands. I'm gonna showcase mostly the harpoon because it's a new ammo type and it is very, very strong. Four shots, uh, killing meat hats, uh, insta killing, immos, hives, armors, depending where you hit them. Sure, the reload is not as fast as the crossbow, and we do not have bolt thrower for that thing. So before you're like, oh my god, the crossbow is useless now. With bolt thrower, crossbow, I think, has a little bit the advantage. But the bomb thrower, a medium slot, silent shotgun basically, because you can load it with steel balls, you can load it with dragon breath, that means you don't need the flare gun, you can have two special ammo, so you can take the harpoon, you can take dragon breath, you can take the harpoon, you can take the wax frag charge. The combinations and the loadouts that you can do with this is crazy, because you can suddenly play a Mosin, or whatever good long ammo rifle that you like, pair it with a bomb thrower for close range or mid range. Dang dude! There will be some crazy loadouts with that. In close range, the harpoon, uh, the regular special ammo, the steel balls, all of this is deadly. Yeah, bring it. Uh, I can't wait for that. You delete bosses with this, uh, it's very fucking nice. I played like with the crowning king auto four that was a little bit close range overkill. I have to admit that, but fun. Okay, next, let's discuss the healing shot, because boy oh boy, in advance there were a lot of different opinions and uh, facts floating around, and some of them were just wrong. Alright, so the healing shot, as you just saw, you can pick up your teammate with that, and it comes with 1-3. So, you can revive quite often with that. Uh, healing shot is also healing, yes, not just resing, uh, it also heals, it heals 100. It does not stop any bleed, though, or fire, right? So, uh, I don't know how useful it will be for healing your teammates. You cannot heal yourself. Well, maybe you can shoot straight up, uh, sprint forward, and it hits you on the head. But it's not like you shoot a healing cloud and you can stay in that and it heals you. So the healing shot is really just for reviving and healing your teammates. Now, uh, what do we think about this? Like, the healing is cool, the reviving, I don't understand. We nerf Necro, and now we bring a revive shot. Like a hand crossbow shot, not, not like, it's like, pew. Why? This is the usual Crytek balancing that is slowly getting on my nerves. Hey guys, um, yeah, the melee tools, they delete bosses too quickly, we have to nerf them drastically. Oh yeah, the world melee weapons? No, no more in the boss area. Well, super rare, they are there and you have the fixed world spawns, yes, I know, but still. Uh, here's the spear. Huh? 
For months the spear absolutely ravaged everything that was out there and I don't care what you're saying, that thing was broken. Right? Uh, it was just with, without competition. I don't know. Then, oh yeah, Necro, kind of weird that you can revive so often. Necro, only one charge. That's it. Yeah. Nerf Necro. Here's a hand crossbow with healing bolts, and you can use it four times. Or even more, if you take two slots with healing shots. I don't... I, it's not even difficult to shoot at an ally, because it has not a lot of drop. What? I mean, I, I don't get me wrong, I like this gimmick. I like healing my teammates when they're out of mats, sure. You can play this with fire and you can play this with the regular. Awesome. It, it, it's something that will very often be a mystery for me. But hey, let's jump to the next one. We're gonna have the rival mace. Yeah, I mean, we all know the short rival. Now it has a mace attachment. Yay. Pretty cool because... Well, emulators, so you can now maybe play a heavy knife or something like that together with a maze. Uh, I, I don't know. It's cool. I like it. More trauma variants. Very nice. The rival has now on the full size, on the short one, the trauma attachment. I like it. Hope we will get more than just that. Emulator, too heavy, one light attack. It's the same as the obvious maze. Fancy, and I approve that. Okay, then we have a few more things. We have the short Sani with the scope and I have to say that thing Interesting. I'm not a huge fan of the Sani sniper because You either had headshots and if you don't do that, it's a wet noodle and you deal basically no damage But as a short variant and I played it And while I played it, I have to say this way was manageable It really was and there are straights for that to make it even better so together with a short shotgun or maybe with quartermaster big shotgun short sniper which is absolutely weird to say it opens up a lot of possibilities sure you can just go the smuggler pack with gun runner and have full sniper full shotgun but not everybody wants to do that and the event is going to be over at one point don't forget about that okay thumbs up i like that and there's another medium slot weapon that we're gonna check out right now. And that's gonna be the Auto 4. Not 5, 4. Because you only have 4 shots on that, because the thing is a little bit smaller. Um, the spare ammo that you get with that uh, is yikes, so you don't get a lot. If you shoot that non-stop, you will run out of ammo very quickly. You can do some fancy stuff, play Quartermaster, play that, with the Lamette Carbine, together with a short crowning king. You get some extra ammo from the Lamette. It might work. Again, I'm crazy loving these two slot weapons that they're giving us because we can spice up our loadouts and play some stuff that we could not play before. Will it be too strong? Hmm. Questionable, because short shotguns are kinda crazy right now since the last balance patch. They are way stronger, way more consistent, and um, I'm not afraid to, you know, RNGesus take the wheel whenever I pulled the trigger in the past on a short shotgun, and they, <laughs> you dealt like five damage, and you're like, what the hell, the crosshair was right on them. Uh, not the case anymore. Okay, so it can be, but it's rare. So we will have to play that a little bit to see how balanced that, that's gonna be. And then we have another single shot sniper, and that's gonna be the main art sniper. It's a little bit different because you have this two staged reload with the placement of the uh, percussion cap. Absolute attention to detail. I love this. It comes with basic ammo, dum dum, and high velocity. It deals 145 damage, but the damage drop off starts quickly. Yeah, I think this is cool. You don't get the big benefit. Hey, I play a medium ammo rifle, but I get a fast reload. Springfield compared to Sparks. You get this, uh, hey, I get bleed rounds on a sniper rifle and still pack a punch. 145 damage? If you can pull it off with the sniper scope, not that easy. At the distance before the damage drop off? Oh, this is gonna be hot. 
okay? I mean, the Sandy with Dum Dum is already crazy, but 145 with Dum Dum is gonna be a true menace. So, that is cool. Velocity is nice. What is it, like 530? I mean, stats right here, please. Um, you also see that the scopes are a little bit different right now with the thicker line. I'm gonna release a short today that explains uh, probably the most important thing that you need to know now when it comes to sniping. Again, I can't pack everything in a video. It's just gonna be too long. Maynard Sniper is something that we will not see too often, but I think it's gonna be very fun. Maybe more in team play. Um, maybe we get some variants for that in the future. Have to wait and see. But so far from the weapons that they added, absolutely love them. There's one more thing that I want to talk about now, and that's gonna be the spear. Now, there's a few more changes. Oh, let's talk about the spear. Let's talk about the throwing knives as well. You can throw them way faster. You can have up to eight right now, and you also increase the damage. Uh, are they the new OP throwing tool? Hmm, who knows? Um, the spear, though, got this time actually nerfed. Uh, because it's not just taking away damage, because that was not the only main issue. The main issue was also that it's super fast and it didn't drop. It drops way more right now and it's way slower. I think it had 60 meters per second and it dropped down to 40 meters per second. You can no longer sprint while uh, charging and aiming the spear unless you have surefoot. So those are all changes that I would have liked to see before touching the damage. Because yeah, it can have a lot of damage, but at least make it difficult to uh, place the damage. Melee damage has been reduced, light attack down to 70 and heavy attack down to 147. Yeah, so uh, that thing got hit hard. And I don't mind it. Lots of people will complain about this, I get it, your OP toy is not generating insane clips anymore. What are you gonna do? Let's play it and if it's really too weak we can buff it again. Like in three to six months or, or something like that. So yeah. So, I think I covered most of the stuff. What I did not cover will come uh, either today or over the next days in short format. Because I tried to get more of these. All right, again, I said already, drop in the comment section below what you think about the changes. Also, if you enjoyed this breakdown video, maybe consider liking the video. It helps me out, costs you nothing. It would be really much appreciated. Okay, and with that, let's roll the outro. Nice, I'm really looking forward to Harvest of Goats. I'm looking forward to build crazy loadouts. I will also try Bounty Clash. Um, not 100% sold on that one, but hey, I'm going to give it a fair chance and maybe I like it, which would be nice. More content. Then as always, big shout out to my patrons. Thank you very much for supporting me over there. You guys are amazing. Nice. Thank you for watching. Go out there, play the new stuff, and most of all, have fun. I'll see you in the next one. Until then, have a good day and bye-bye.